Page 76, please. So we did a couple of days looking at deductive reasoning, the ability to make a conclusion, a logical conclusion, based on some true statements. And I'll start out, first of all, any questions from number one and number two? Remember I said to you that number three and number four I would sort of go over in class, although I didn't assign number four. By the way, one student did actually solve number four yesterday in class, pointed it out to me and did a very lovely job. So well played. Some of you are really getting this. I found, Alex, I found proofs tough. When I got to college, that if you asked me what did I struggle the most in in math, a lot of the stuff I found easy. Proofs I found very difficult. There's a science to them and there's an art to them. And by my third year in university, I had the hang in them. But my first couple of years, it was kind of hit and miss. So if you're finding these weird, you're normal. Hopefully you found w number one okay, though. You're able to, if you give me two statements, come to a logical premise or a logical conclusion. But are there any questions about number one and number two? Yes. Yep. Let's see. So, what, what, uh, what do you get as an answer in choice one, choice two, and choice three? Do you get the same answer every time, or what do you get? What do you get? Six each time. So the conjecture is any number I stick in less than 10 will work. Maybe any number at all will work. Prove it. I'll do a generic number, n. You ready? Add 4. Right? Double it. 2n plus 8. I doubled everything. Add 7. 2n plus 8 plus 7 is 2n plus 15. I have to zoom in here so I can write in this small blank. Okay. I can't fit this all on one screen at this magnification, so I'm going to do mine in choice 3. n, n plus 4, 2n plus 8. 2n plus 15. Okay. Add on the original number. What was my original number here, Joe? n. So if I add n to this instead of two n's, you know how many n's I'll have? Three n's. Three n's plus 15. See where we're going? I don't know where we're going to end up, but I can, I can follow this through. Let's see. Divide by 3. So if I divide by 3, I would divide that by 3 and that by 3. What's 3n divided by 3? What's 15 divided by 3? Okay. Subtract the original number. What was my original number? So if I subtract n from this, you know what's left behind? Just the 5. Uh, add on the number of the month that you were born. Okay. Let's find out if the month that we're born will keep track of what happens to it and we'll see if it just suddenly vanishes later on anyways so what month were you born what number six so that would make this I'm gonna write this as five plus six for me it'd be five plus seven and I'm gonna see if your six just vanishes later on and then the five has continued dropping down uh, add on four nine plus six I don't want to touch that 6 because that's your month. Times by 100. 900 plus 600. Add on the number of the day that you were born. What? 3? So I'm going to write this as 900 plus 600 plus 3. That came from the month. That came from the day. So mine would be a 700 plus 31. Times everything by 100. Okay. 9,000 plus 6,000. No, times by 100, Mr. Duick. 90,000 plus 60,000, plus 300. 
Yes? Add the last two digits of the year that you were born. So, add the last two digits of the year that you were born. What year were you born? 1995? That's going to give me a 90,000 plus a 60,000 plus a 300 plus a 95. And when you subtract 90,000, you're going to get this value. Now, I'm going to get for you, there's your month, there's your day, and there's your year. It's your birthday. Is it not? You were born June 3rd, 1995. This will cancel, right? And I'll be left with that, that, and that, which is why you got 60,395. See, I think everybody who does this, actually their answer is going to be their birthday. No, no, no. There's a 90,000 plus 60,000 plus 300 plus 95. If I subtract 90,000, all that's going to happen is this is going to vanish, but I'll have a 60,000 and a 300 and a 95 dropping down, which is your birthday. If I had done this for me, sorry? The other answers all would have been 60,395 for you. Yes or no? Isn't that what you told me you got 60395 for all of them? So isn't that 603? If you add that together, isn't that 60395? Right? I'm saying that that's what you got. And now I can see where that 6 came from. You see how your month dropped down and we ended up moving it right to there. My month would have been a seven. It would have dropped down. It would begin a seven there, a seven there, a seven there, a seven there, a seven. I would have ended up with a seven in front. July. My day is 31st. I was born on July 31st. So I would have uh, put a 31 right there. A 31, a 310, sorry, a 3100 right there. A 31, I would have ended up with a 31 sitting right there. And the year that I was born, 1969, that would have dropped down there too. So I can kind of see how this one works. I think all of you should have got your own birthday. And you know what? I don't think it has to be a number between 1 and 10. It looks like this would work for any number. Pick any number at all, and eventually you'll end up with your birthday as long as you plug in your numbers. This is a fairly tough one, by the way. This is harder than I'd feel comfy asking on a test. Is that okay? Vaguely? Any others? Let's also look at number three real quick. Number three says, try and prove these ones. Well, for consecutive even numbers, I would call them 2n, 2n plus 2, and 2n plus 4. Those are three even numbers. How do I know they're consecutive, Joe? Because here's your first one, two more, and four more. That's how you get your next two. That's what I would start out doing. What does the word sum mean, Joe? Times? What does sum mean? Okay, you need to know the, you need to know your math words. Sum means add. So the sum is divisible by six. If I add I get what's two n plus two n plus two n? Six n. What's two plus four gathering like terms? Does 6 go into that? How do you know 6 has to go into it? Does 6 go into there? How do you know? There's a 6 in front of everything. Does 6 go into there? Yeah, I know 6 goes into 6. You know what? I guess if you add any three even numbers that are in a row, the answer will be divisible by 6. There's a proof. Any of the other ones you want me to try or you're wondering about? I'll do a couple of more of these later, but I've been talking enough. I want to get to today's lesson. <sighs> Turn the page. This one I did not type out because I thought the textbook didn't do a brutal job. Can you go to lesson three? 
and the heading is, and this might be a new word for all of you, so you can underline it. We're going to investigate a fallacious proof. Fallacious comes from the word fallacy. If someone says there's a fallacy in your argument, what does that mean? Anybody know what the word fallacy means? Sorry? You've, you've made an illegal chain of reasoning somewhere along the way. There's a fallacy in your argument. Somewhere in your logical deductive reasoning, two of your steps don't go together. What we're going to look at is trying to analyze the validity of an argument. And here's a very, very famous one. You can tell that we've done something wrong in this argument because we're going to end at a stupid conclusion, a nonsense conclusion, which means somewhere along the way in our chain of reasoning, we have a fallacy. Here's the proof. They start out saying, let A equal B. Here's the setup. This is an equation. We're going to add A to each side. So I'm going to go plus A plus A. Is that allowed? Are you allowed to add the same thing to both sides of an equation? Yeah, math 8. What is A plus A? What's an easier way to write A plus A? 2A. So here, for this step, Joe, I'm going to write gather like terms. That's where this line came from. Liam, can you read step three of this line to me? It's out loud. Read it out loud. Just read this line to me. Now read step four to me, please. What did they do to both sides in step four? Can you see it? That's why I wanted you to read them both out so we could see the difference. Uh, they've gone minus 2b from each side. Is that illegal, or are you allowed to do the same thing to both sides of an equation? I think, I think I'm okay with this. Shay, can you read step five to me, please? Stop. That looks different from above. How the heck did they get this from that? What did they do here? You gotta remember your math 10 and math nine. How did they turn 2a minus 2b into 2 bracket a minus b? What did you call that last year? It begins with the letter F. Okay, they factored. What did they factor? GCF. Greatest common factor. Remember doing that last year? Okay. So here they've gone G, C, F. Shay, I didn't have you read the other side because the other side didn't seem like it had changed all that. Well, wait a minute. Why did the A plus B come from a minus 2B? How did we get an A minus B over here? Devin, can you see it? They went positive B, take away 2B. Oh, that's where the negative B came from. So they also did like terms. Bender, is that okay? So a little weird, I know. What are they doing here to both sides? You see it? What are they doing to both sides here? I heard someone say dividing. Yeah. Dividing what? Marcus. Are you allowed to divide both sides of an equation by a number? Well, yeah, it's how you got the x by itself. You would divide by 5, divide by 5, or divide by 10 yeah, to get the x by itself. Marcus, what is a minus b divided by a minus b? What's anything divided by itself? 5 divided by 5 is 0. 8 divided by 8 is? What's a minus b divided by a minus b? That's why they wrote a 1 here. What's a minus b divided by a minus b? 
That's why they wrote 1 here. What is 2 times 1? So we end up with 2 equals 1. Is that true? Does 2 equal 1? That must mean there's a fallacy in our argument somewhere. Because I've ended up with a conclusion that I know has to be false or I'm in trouble. All the math I've learned so far is wrong. Real question is then, where is the fallacy? Where did I zig? Where did I make my mistake? Let me see it. Yeah. Emily says step six. Now, believe it or not, Emily's right. Why step six? So Emily's thought is it has something to do with the negatives. She's very, very close. But I got to be really fussy. There's a key reason why step six is illegal. And it has to do with the very first line, step one. Aaron, can you read step one to me, please? Read it nice and loud again, without the word without the word let. A equals B. What did you just say? Okay, that's what we started out. That was our initial premise. So look at that bracket in step six. What's A minus B if A equals B? What is A minus B? Emily, what you're really doing here, because you said that, you're dividing by zero. That's a huge no-no. We've said for years you can't divide by zero. And this is one of the reasons why we don't allow that. If we allowed you to divide by zero, uh, you get stupid math, dumb math, bizarre math, yucky math. Where is the error? Step six. Why, Joe? If A equals oh, if A equals B, then A minus B is zero, because that's the same as going A take away A or B take away B. If they're each the same number, you're going something minus itself. Zero. It's all caps, so that should be shouting. We can't divide by zero. No? Okay. Too many? Or are they getting stale? I need to actually. Uh, Go to the dollar store and get some prizes, maybe. I haven't quite figured out a way to do that. The fallacy in this proof here is, without realizing it, because you said A was the same as B, when you divide by A minus B, you're dividing by 0. And as soon as you do that, that's a problem. Why can't you divide by 0? Because of this. Other reasons as well. Put your pencils down. Look up. I can't remember if I've done this with you or not. If I haven't, I am now. Benedict, what's 6 divided by 3? Now that also means that 2 times 3 is 6. If you went 6 divided by 0 and you got an answer, I'll call that answer x, that would also mean that x times 0 was 6. What's wrong with this line? What's anything times 0? Can you ever go x times something equals 6? So this is actually saying there's no possible answer that will work. Because for this answer to work, it would have to be able to go backwards 
and nothing does. So there's also a fallacy in that argument right there. Next page. Page 80. So here is your vocabulary words. Fallacy, fallacious if you want the noun, and validity. In mathematics, a proof is valid if the reasoning is true in every single step of the proof. We say that the proof on the previous page is invalid because one of the steps, step six, of the reasoning is not correct. It is correct to divide both sides of an equation by the same quantity, except you can't divide by zero. And in step one, we said that a equals b, so a minus b is zero. Even though all of the other steps are correct, all it takes is one single improper argument to reduce the whole proof invalid, to make the whole... I'm terrible. All right. So, even though all the other steps are correct, it only takes one improper action, one improper step to make a proof invalid. Proofs are like houses of cards. You ever tried building a house out of a deck of cards? You move one piece and the whole thing comes crumbling down, which is why proofs are tough. It says this, in mathematics, an argument is when two or more statements or propositions called premises or conjectures are used together to form a conclusion. An argument can be valid or invalid, as in the next value. Example. <sighs> it is possible to have a valid argument that's not true. It is possible that in your argument you haven't broken any logic rules, but you still ended up at a conclusion that might be incorrect. Let's get to example one. Consider the following two arguments. Argument one, all women are mortal. Argument two, statement two, Anne Irwin Young is a woman. Therefore, Anne Irwin Young is mortal. That's our first argument. Argument two says this, some people who cough have the flu. Jaden has a cough, therefore Jaden has the flu. Which one of those arguments has an error in the reasoning? Which one of those is a fallacious proof, has a fallacy? Yeah, Taylor. Why? So some does not imply all. Argument two. Some is not the same as, that's my abbreviation for, is not the same as, is not equal to, oh. Can you cough and not have the flu? Yes, based on those statements. Thank you for coughing. Well timed. We do this all the time in society getting some and all mixed up. Racists do it all the time. They try and stereotype an entire race based on one person's actions. Politicians do it an awful lot. We do this all the time. Bad math, bad arguing, bad logic. Page 81. The following is a famous story in logical reasoning. Ignore the first paragraph. Three people want to stay at a hotel. They arrive late at night, second paragraph, and they're very tired. The hotel has one room left, but it's still under renovation. The manager gives them a discounted rate since the room is not completed and they are attending the conference. So here's what the manager charges them. 30 bucks for the room. The three friends contribute 10 bucks each. How much money have they paid? 30 bucks. The next morning, the manager rethinks the rate and decides to give them a further discount, hoping that they'll book again the next day. The manager gives the bellboy five bucks to take to the room and give back to the three friends. The bellboy realizes the three friends aren't expecting any sort of refund 
and he feels it's going to be too difficult to split five bucks equally. He decides to give them back only three dollars, and he keeps two bucks for himself. So he gives the three friends the three dollar refund. Each friend gets a dollar. The three friends had originally each paid ten dollars, but each of them received a dollar back. Now they have only paid nine dollars each for the room. They are happy that the manager has given them a discount and they'll come back to the hotel next year and the bellboy is happy because he's got an extra two bucks in his pocket. Bill, a student, reads the story above and he says the total cost of the room should now be nine dollars per person times three people plus the two bucks the bellboy kept, twenty-nine dollars. Where'd the extra dollar go? How many of you heard something like this one before? None of you have. Oh man, my elementary school teacher gave this one to me. We started out with 30 bucks. At the end here, I have 29 bucks. Apparently. Or do I? Did we lose a dollar? How much did each person pay for the room? Nine bucks. How much did the bellboy keep? 9 times 3 plus 2 is 29. Where'd the extra dollar go? Let you think about this one. Boston, you awake? Okay. Here's your homework. Try number 1. Write the reasoning used in each step if you can. If you're not sure, you can take a peek at the back. And then we end up with 2 equals 1, which I know is incorrect. It means somewhere here we made a faulty line of reasoning. Somewhere here there's a fallacy. Try number 2. You end up with 5 equaling 4. Does 5 equal 4? Then somewhere along the way we've made a mistake in our reasoning. See if you can figure out where. Try number five. Number seven. So in number seven, they're giving you four arguments, argument one, argument two, argument three, and argument four. Three of them have an error in reasoning. See if you can spot which only one of those is a legitimate argument. And number eight.